I want to give a shout out to my team because because of them and because of their enthusiasm, their energy, their drive, their commitment, and their love for this game, not only are they winning, but it's allowed me to win too. You know, this year I, uh, I won the top sales manager in my company. So of all sales teams and all the sales managers within my organization, I was the top sales manager. And I wanna share with you how I was able to actually achieve this milestone. For those of you who've been following the channel for a while now, you remember that I also won last year's top sales manager in the company. For those of you who don't know who I work for, I work for a national size recognized multi-billion dollar mortgage lending institution. We have over 3,000 employees all across the nation, over 100 teams all throughout the nation, and I'm fortunate and blessed to be hustling alongside with every day the number one team. And so I wanna share with you because I think some of you are, are maybe on a path to where you someday you might wanna become a manager or you just wanna understand the ingredients of what it takes to win. So however you're viewing this, this video right now, I wanna share with you how I was able to achieve consecutively this title. And I think that first off, you need to really recognize that in any organization, there are going to be teams that stand out. There are going to be loan officers that stand out. And this happens in, in any environment. You could be with a small company or you could be with a national size company like mine. Either way, as a sales representative, you are quickly going to find out through KPI reports or production reports or shout outs or you know, monthly sales rallies, who the key players are, who the movers are, who are the ones at the top. And you're gonna wanna only pay attention to those who are consistent, meaning it wasn't just one month or two months, they're constantly at the top 10. And the reason why you wanna do this is because I believe that in order to find your, the fastest route to success, in other words, the fastest way to get to the top is to simply study those who are already at the top and kind of ignore everything else, ignore all the naysayers. If, if you're being fed information that has nothing to do with growing you, then all it is is noise. And until you adopt that way of living and way of thinking, you're always gonna be caught up in the noise. And so when you have identified who the top players are, who the key players are, who the top 10 in your organization is, you now have insight of what it takes to become part of that club. Now that's just not the only thing that you gotta do though, you also have to study their actions, study their work ethic, understand their strategy, and then mirror it for the same results. Now I know you heard me say this a few times before, but the way that I'm able to achieve this milestone is not because I'm special, <laughs> It's not because I went to a college or I got a degree. I didn't even go to college. I don't have a degree. Um, it's not because I am good at selling myself. It's because of the actions that are being executed by those around me. So I'm fortunate enough to help influence the energy around me. As a sales leader, sales manager, I, I'm a little bit unique compared to most sales managers, whereas they don't sell anymore. And I think by having this level relationship with your sales team, you create this dynamic and this kind of this camaraderie that's very hard to find. Now, I'm not saying that if your sales manager doesn't sell, don't respect him, still respect that dude because he earned the position to sell. But too often times when people earn that position to become a sales manager or sales leader, it's because they were good at what they did. So pay homage to that person. They earn that title. But, um, but what sets a producing sales manager apart from just a general sales manager is the producing sales manager shows you by way of example, as opposed to talk about old irrelevant techniques that may not necessarily work. And there's this bias opinion or this kind of this uh, this prejudice 
strictness to their to their teachings or their instructions. And so if you have a manager that's telling you, hey man, you gotta make a couple sales today, you gotta make a couple sales today, it's different if that manager is also making a couple sales rather than a manager just telling you what to do. Does that make sense? So because I have this advantage where I'm also making a couple sales, and I I say I replace the word you with we. Like we need to make a couple sales, we need to get back on the phone, we, does that make sense? And I'm participating in that action. Now by practicing this way, I've been able to influence a very efficient model of working because my team, fortunately, as much as they produce, they're very much on autopilot. So in other words, it requires very little management from me um, besides, you know, the tedious one-offs, like the fires you put out, the customer service issues, or the coaching. But besides that, because we're all on the same level and we're all trying to achieve the same goal, fortunately, I've found a way to hack the system so that I free up enough time to produce sales myself. The upside is I make more income that way, of course, because not only am I making income from the override of my sales team, but I'm also making the income from the override of my own closed sales. So I've been able to find kind of that sweet spot. And when I get acknowledged in front of my entire company, which is next week, for being the top sales manager in the company and winning a trip, by the way, they call this President's Council. And what they do is they treat you to uh, a week on, in this remote destination, this ideal vacation spot. So this year we're going to uh, uh, Cancun. Right, and so for almost a week we spend a, a, a you know some time at this beautiful, amazing resort, and we get we get treated right. You know, we get the red carpet treatment, this huge suite, amazing views, f- wonderful food, lovely events, prizes, and 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 different events throughout that time that we're there, and uh, and I'm and I'm grateful. Um, you know, I, I think that it's awesome that the company pays its top earners in this way. This is as a reward. But when I get acknowledged for this feat or for this win, I will make it a point that it's not because of me. It's because of the actions of my team. It's because of their choice to take the challenge that they face every single day with a smile, to go in every single day day in, day out, and make it a game rather than make it a grind. You see, I think the difference between the top team versus the bottom team typically has to do with the energy within that team. And so if that team is filled with the energy of scarcity, fear, um, stagnancy, complacency, you know, they're, they're, they're not necessarily driven, they're more kind of burnt, and they're finding reasons why they're not winning. So they might, you know, they might look at other teams that are winning and say, oh, it's because of this or, oh, it's because of that. As opposed to look at the other teams and say, man, if they could do it, we could do it. If they could do it, I wonder what they're doing so that I could do it too. They're, instead of looking at the other teams as kind of motivation and influence, they look at other teams as, well, it's because they get favored treatment or it's because they get the red carpet or because they get these secret Glen Gary leads and you will be amazed how how often that happens you know we my team I'm sure gets hated on all the time there's this perception that we get these Glen Gary leads and it's not that way the 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 real reason the secret of of the of the success from the team is simply because they look at it in a completely different way and my goal in this video is to help you look at your daily tasks in that in a completely different way than than what maybe even your own teammates are looking at it as and I promise you just because you're on a specific team doesn't mean you need to you know run to the beat of that of that team you can isolate yourself and create your own rhythm you can create your own success regardless of what team or surroundings or influence you have immediately around you so if you're on one of these bottom level teams That doesn't mean you have to be a bottom level player. You could simply use the techniques that I've outlined in this video so you could study the successful successful people within your your sales floor or organization 
and simply duplicate the results, mirror the results, be the one that shines within your team, use that as influence and say, man, if, <laughs> if no one's gonna lead on this team, I will, and I'm gonna I'm shine. And what happens is naturally you get this positive spotlight put on you and you get these acknowledgements that become addicting. So you get rewards, you get incentives, you get bonuses, but it's because you've earned it. And then soon people will be looking at you like, oh, it's because he gets those Glengarry leads. And you know what? You gotta, you gotta face that with a smile because haters are gonna hate. People will always envy somebody or someone. And you could be the one who envies or you could be the one that's envied. Does that make sense? I chose the latter. And the upside of choosing that, that side is because you get more compensation, you get more income, you get more confidence, you get more security. And being in sales today, the only way that you can earn your equity and earn your, your seat and become irreplaceable, become a significant asset to your company is by generating results. And the only way you're gonna generate results is by taking the actions and executing the actions that deliver those results. Well, what are those resu what are those actions? Well, you look at the people who are already generating those results and they'll give you an, a perfect example of what actions are needed in order to produce those results. So I hope you find this video helpful. I wanna give a shout out to my team because because of them and because of their enthusiasm, their energy, their drive, their commitment, and their love for this game, not only are they winning, but it's allowed me to win too. So this video is for you, I appreciate you guys. And here's a, here's a um, fun fact, is a lot of the mindset techniques and hacks and wins that my team does, and as well as I do, I share it with you on this feed. I share it with you every Thursday in the Breakfast of Champions which is, by the way, 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, every Thursday, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You're gonna wanna join that feed because you can pick apart what those actions are that can generate the same results for you, regardless of what team you're on. It's all about your paper, boo-boo. So if you're, if you're, if you're committed to, to get those results, if you wanna get those, those accolades, if you wanna get that recognition, or hell, even if you don't, if you just wanna see your bank account balance go up, then you gotta stay, stay close to the people who are making the moves, and the people that are making the moves follow at Sales Remastered on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, LinkedIn. Wherever you are on your social media platform, the chances are Sales Remastered is there too. Be sure you add it to your feed because you're always one content piece away, you're always one video away to unlocking a challenge that's holding you back so you can break through and reach your potential. I hope you guys like this video. Please like, comment, and share. You're gonna wanna hit the subscription button or the like uh, on the page if you haven't already, and add me to your stream, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.